Hey, my name is Patrick Higgins, and this is my mock. It's the Pieces of Cinema, a bunch of iconic scenes of movies from throughout the decades. And it's a bit of a timeline here, so let's start at number one. We go all the way back to 1933 there. So 1933 was the first King Kong movie. This is an iconic scene of him climbing up the Empire State Building, holding the lady, and the airplanes are trying to get him down. So I used one of the old... 9 volt battery motors um, to make the planes rotate. So like a big shaft goes up the middle of the thing to make the planes fly around. You did a good job being able to hide that stuff all the way in the building. Yeah. I was lucky to like put it in the center and just um, uh, get it hidden pretty well. It's always great to add some movement like that though with the planes going around. It really, really makes it stand out. Yeah, of course. Uh, so next one is 1939. It's a classic movie, The Wizard of Oz. Um, I knew as soon as I saw the minifigures in the Lego movie CMF line, I had to include this scene. It's just, um, it's a fan favorite movie. Uh, Yellow Brick Road is so iconic in Hollywood. Um, and the figures are fantastic, so they really bring the whole thing to life. I love all the, the new takes people have had with, since those characters came out in the collectible minifigures line. Uh, there's been so many great builds with them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I put a few poppies around it because of um, that's probably my favorite scene in the movie where like they fall into the poppy field and the witch comes after them. Fantastic. And number three? Uh, 1954 was the first appearance of Godzilla. Um, it's not quite to scale because to scale it would not fit on the little vignette that I made. <laughs> um, so I sized it down a bit, but it's got a lot of um, posability. The legs and head can move, and the tail moves, um, lots of spikes and such. Um, what, what types of kind of joints were you able to use with some of the new mixel pieces, or uh, what did you incorporate there? Mostly like the, the bigger ball joint okay. pieces, you can kind of see one there. Um, uh, yeah, I used those throughout pretty much the whole thing and just uh, surrounded it with a bunch of gray slopes to give them kind of a, a scaly look and gave him the dark blue eyes to, for that nuclear breath or whatever he has. Um, wanted to symbolize that somehow. To give that nice scary effect, it looks right. great. Yeah. Uh, the next one is uh, 1956, The Ten Commandments. Uh, it's a really long movie, so I, I haven't quite seen it yet, but um, it's an iconic scene of the Moses crossing or parting the Red Sea so the Israelites can cross on dry land. Um, so I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know like what all to say about it, but I've read the, read the book, the source material. So, um, it's, the uh, stacks of one-by-one one studs there work really well for that, just to get the varying yeah. heights of the water. Yeah, um, and one of the other interviews I did with you was my Arkham Asylum, and I got a whole lot of blue studs all at once, so I just had some lying around that I used for it and some other one of these um, uh, vignettes here. Uh, but I think that it captures the look. I go. To, I went for a little bit of a forced perspective, a little bit, because it gets it's tall up here and it gets shorter and shorter. I haven't played around with that before, and I think it looks pretty good. Uh, when you've got really small scenes like this, I think you can do a lot with that, which is kind of varying the heights of things. Right. Yeah. Uh, the next one was a bit of a challenge. Uh, it's a 007 Goldfinger. The biggest challenge for the 007 was picking a movie. Because there's so many good ones. So I went with um, the Sean Connery version uh, and the Aston Martin. I think that's his most recognized vehicle uh, and the white tux and such. Um, so that was the 1964 Goldfinger. Um, in this one, you did a great job because you have your black base you have with all of them, but then you laid the road on top of right. it. And so you yeah. really kind of give that 3D pop effect. Yeah, I wanted some of these to kind of jump out of the, the vignette a little bit. And you'll see that later with the Jurassic Park and the Jaws and such. Um, unfortunately, the car is too small to like fit any of its little flip out gadgets and such. Um, I might modify it in the future to include like some guns or rocket launchers and something. Now we move on to Jaws. Yeah, Jaws is one of my favorite movies um, just because of the, the sheer suspense and thrill of the whole movie. Um, but this is the scene where the orca boat is just about uh, in the water and um, 
our protagonist here thinks up a, a plan to put the air tank inside of his mouth and then shoot it to cause Jaws to explode. Spoilers. But it's been out for it's four, been a, a few years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was really fun to make Jaws, like the actual shark, because I wanted to make him brick built so he could be that massive size. Uh, and then I just used some uh, hinged plates to kind of get him on that angle. Um, I did the same thing with the boat to make it look like it's sinking. And once again, it's kind of popping out of its uh, boundaries there. Yeah, really great work. Uh, so next is probably the most iconic uh, scene in all of cinema is the Empire Strikes Back, I Am Your Father moment. Um, I recently purchased a light-up blade for uh, Darth Vader to just kind of add a little extra flair to this. Uh, but, yeah, um, this one was the second one that I built. I was still kind of trying to figure out how much space I wanted to use on the vignettes, so... Luke kind of hangs off of it, uh, but I, I really like this one. I think it looks very accurate to the scene. Um, I used a lot of pictures and rewatched the movie a few times just to get it just right. No, uh, kind of greebly bits above Luke there. You, got, you always got to get that down just right yeah. for this scene. Yeah, greebling's like a kind of difficult technique, but um, I think that uh, like I just got a bunch of used light gray pieces and picked out a bunch of them that looked jagged or whatever and stuck them on there and then another iconic scene next to that so this is the scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark from 1981 where uh, Indiana Jones is trying to replace the golden idol with a bag of sand but it doesn't end up too good for him um, I recently I missed out on the Indiana Jones Lego sets so I had to purchase the minifigure and the idol I just got the idol the other day, so in its place was a C-3PO head until I got the, the idol. Close enough. Close enough, yeah. Um, Those Indiana Jones sets were really fantastic. Were. One of the best themes LEGO has produced in recent history. Yeah, I would be so down with them remaking them like the Harry Potter sets because uh, they, were, they were great. I like what you've done as well with the kind of angled tiles on top of the floor there. Oh, yeah, those were, I, I just, like, this one needed some kind of something, you know, to set it apart from the other ones, and I didn't want to just put down tiles like I did here. Um, so I, I wanted to, like, you know, give it, like, a Aztec kind of feel to it, like some architecture of that sort. Yeah, very nice. Uh, so next is, this one's been a fan favorite at the show, uh, E.T., the extraterrestrial. I think that it's just such a recognizable scene to uh, parents and kids alike. Uh, everyone seems to mistake the kid on the bike with a Darth Vader, though. <laughs> I might need to amend that. <laughs> Mini Darth Vader <laughs> riding against the moon there. Yeah. Um, so I used the little teeth pieces as the, um, the stars in the background. So the back doesn't look that that great, but the front looks uh, very good, I think. Um, so just, you know, pretty simple. Trees and the moon and all that. Yeah, nice little pathway. Uh, so next is Back to the Future, uh, another one of my favorite movies. And um, I had an advantage for this one because Lego has made a Back to the Future set. So I took the DeLorean, cut it in half, and uh, made it look like it's halfway through traveling through time and it's got the little fire trails and such on the back there yeah, that a little made it a little easier for that scene right yeah so then we'll move back down to the end and keep going with the timeline here in 1993 uh jurassic park 1993 so the theme of the th show is uh dinosaur so i knew i had to include some kind of dinosaur thing and you know it has to be jurassic park um this is the scene where the T-Rex breaks out of its cage because the power in the park goes out. And we've got the two kids inside the Jeep here, just terrified um, and panicking and such. Um, I had my mom, she is a really crafty person, and she made these custom stickers for the Jeep. I think that really helps um, uh, capture the look there. Uh, and I did not buy any of the Jurassic Park Lego sets. So my younger brother, Caleb, he loves Jurassic Park. And he let me borrow the T-Rex the and the two people. So I'm very thankful for that. 
you go. Getting all the family involved here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, uh, brought to you by the Higgins family. <laughs> I love it. And what do we have next here? Uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas, also 1993. Um, uh, this one was not originally on the list. It was more of a spur of the moment thing because I had an idea to make the Jack Skellington with the big lanky long arms. Um, so not the most iconic movie ever, but it's still a good one. It's got some interesting uh, designs and stuff. And, you know, Di uh, the Lego made the Disney CMF that had Sally and Jack in it. So I threw them both on there. And I, I love the way you styled this build and everything with, the, you know, the, the kind of curve and the, the tree and everything. Yeah. yeah, I had to make the moon a whole lot bigger so you could see him and the little curve. This is a recreation of the movie poster. Um, except for Sally, she's not supposed to be there. Uh, so, yeah. The next scene over is very different in approach. Yeah, um, this one was actually the last one I did. I finished it on Tuesday, right before the show. Um, but I knew I needed more Disney. And I love uh, the Pixar movies, and Toy Story is just a classic. It's the best one, I think. Uh, and this is the scene, the, you know, the claw. Um, in Pizza Planet. So I had to find as many aliens as I could and stuff them in there. Uh, I wish I could put some like some lights on it, but I'd, I haven't really gotten any. I think some lights would really, uh, like, you know, like on the floor or something, kind of give it a, like an arcade feel. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, Toy Story. Next is uh, probably one of my favorite builds that I've done is Mission Impossible from 1996. Um, Lego made the Mission Impossible Ethan Hunt minifigure in the Lego Dimensions line. Um, so I had to use him. This is such a great scene. I love this. I love the scene in the movie. It's yeah. so suspenseful yeah. and everything. And then you, you captured it really nicely here. I even put a little mouse <laughs> up top uh, for the extra suspense scene that they cause. Uh, this was um, kind of where I started experimenting with the jumper plates that I used on Indiana Jones later on. Yeah. But, you know, the room is full of those, like, pressure pads. And if you step on them, that, that makes the alarm go off. So I had to have um, something to show that. Uh, and then, like, the little thermometer thing that they've got and the big computer before they were all flat screen. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah, very nice. So next is a movie I have not seen yet, unfortunately, but it seems like everyone else has. It's the Titanic. Uh, I wanted to, you know, do the king of the world scene or whatever it's called, where, where Jack comes out with his arms up. But then I found another picture of, uh, what's her name? The girl in the movie. And they're both on there together, so I put them both there. And don't tell anybody, but I had to use a little bit of glue to get the arms out like that. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> we'll let it slide. But yeah, even if you haven't seen the movie, this is an iconic like image, for, I think, from it. Right, yeah. Um, and it's just like a little cut of the ship. It's not... I, obviously, I can't fit the whole thing on something this size. Um, I think it still captures the image quite well. So, uh, Lord of the Rings is my favorite movie series of all time. So, when I made the list, it had to be on there. Um, and this is from The Fellowship of the Ring, the very first one. Uh, it's the famous you shall not pass line that Gandalf gives to Balrog, the demon that's chasing them out of the mines of Moria. Uh, Balrog was a lot of fun to make. I used a lot of those um, smaller mixel parts for the joints on him because he wasn't quite the size of Godzilla, but he was still bigger than King Kong. Um, and then I used like these new um, uh, shield pieces. Nexo Knight yeah, type of shield? Shields to kind of give like a scaly wing kind of thing. Um, and then covered the bottom with lava and uh, he gave him his fire whip and such. I also really like the posing that I did with um, Boromir and Frodo. Uh, Boromir's got to hold him back so he doesn't try and save Gandalf. Um, but yeah, just one of my one of my favorite movies ever yeah. made. The Balrog looks very scary there, so yeah. it's, you achieved it nicely. And this is another one that kind of jumps off of the boundary because Balrog is so massive. Um, yeah. 
Uh, so next one is the Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl from 2003. This is the introduction of Jack Sparrow, one of the best character introductions in cinema, I think, because uh, the camera zooms in on him looking all heroic, and then it zooms out and his ship is sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Um, just such a good introduction for the character. And um, I wanted to symbolize that. So uh, once again, I used the little blue studs because um, I got so many blue studs. Uh, and I just added a few like little pirate things. I like gave him his sword and the little treasure map and barrel. I had a rum bottle on there, but it must have got lost in the transportation. Uh, You've got the sails just right above the water there yeah. as it goes under. That's so great. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one was really fun to make. It was pretty simple, but, you know, it's still pretty fun. Uh, so this one is, yeah, it's the first of the, spy, of the superhero movies that I've got. Um, superhero movies kind of very recently popped up in the cinema. Uh, and this was one of the first big ones besides like X-Men and original Superman and such. Um, and also one of my personal favorites, which is why it's here. So this is the Spider-Man 2 from 2004 with the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Um, and this is the scene where he is stopping the subway train from running aground. Uh, one of the best scenes in the whole movie, just a lot of uh, great cinematography and symbolism in the, in the scene. Uh, it, was a good it was a good scene for the time period because uh, New York had just recently suffered the Twin Towers uh, attack. Um, and this was like a scene that symbolized all of New York coming together to save one guy. Uh, so it was very um, culturally relevant at the time. Yeah, I think these earlier Spider-Man movies have been overshadowed now with all of the Marvel movies that have come out in more recent years. But yeah. when these when these first came out, it was really some of the, the best superhero movies ever made. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, next is a representation of the Harry Potter franchise. This one was also a challenge because I had to pick just one movie, and there's so many good ones for Harry Potter. Um, so I just went with the last one, the last, the final fight between Harry and um, Voldemort. Uh, right before Voldemort, spoilers, get, dies. Uh, it's been out a while though, so uh, they're just um, doing their little wizard duel. Uh, a couple techniques I used. Um, this flooring here, I didn't press down the tiles all the way for some of them, so it gives it kind of a cobbled look. Um, and then, like, the roof is kind of falling apart here because Hogwarts just got atta attacked and stuff. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's that one. How, how are the pieces in the middle held together there? Uh, this is all just one long piece with an axle. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that is holding them together. And they're not connected to the wands, but they are just far enough apart to, you know, hold together. There you go. That works great. Yep. Um, next one is a very recent movie, Avengers Infinity War. Uh, the climactic, almost finished to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, there's so many great scenes from Marvel. It was hard to pick just one. They're like, what, 25 movies now? <laughs> uh, but, like... All of them kind of build up to this moment with um, Thanos having the full gauntlet and doing his snap. And Thor almost stops him and it just barely fails. Um, last year I purchased a, a light up infinity gauntlet that looks really great. I think my batteries are almost dead. They're kind of dim there. but uh, That's like chrome, gold chrome? Yeah, it's um, bootleg, but it still lights up, so that's cool. Uh, and I experimented with like a tree design. It's it, uh, I don't know. I might change it, but you know, they it takes place in a forest in Africa um, or Wakanda specifically, and um, I wanted to get some like foliage and stuff going on there. Uh, Continue experimenting with it. Yeah, I, I've been taking pictures of all the other amazing trees here at Brick Fair and trying to get some ideas. I haven't really wrestled with trees all that much. So the very last one is actually the first one I made. I made it back in uh, late October. It's from the Joker movie. Oh, let me uh, get those out of the way. Well, maybe they won't move. Okay, whatever. Uh, it's from the Joker movie from 2019. And I made this one 
really for the memes because you know all the memes of the Joker stairs and stuff they were just really funny and I decided I want to make some out of Lego and that kind of spawned the idea to build all of them um, but yeah I haven't seen this film yet I'm waiting for it to come out on DVD so I can check it out um, but I've heard great things about it yeah, the, I love how iconic the stairs scene has become now. Like you yeah. said, just a, a piece of like pop culture outside of just the movie. <laughs> yeah, like um, around the time the movie came out, people were going to the Bronx just to go on the stairs and dance. It was funny. It's a good time. Yeah, you captured it really nicely. But these scenes are all fantastic. So what is the public's reaction when they come up? Do you see like people of various ages kind of uh, you know go to one scene or another as they recognize it? Yeah, a lot of the 80s classic stuff is the most popular, like uh, Star Wars through um, uh, Jurassic Park. Um, everyone everyone sees E.T. and uh, Back to the Future and notices it immediately. Um, and then they look at Thanos with his glow-up gauntlet. And um, a lot of the younger kids just say it's a clown on stairs, but, it, I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> uh, Jaws and... Um, uh, the King Kong, King Kong are very popular because King Kong can move and stuff. Um, and the kids always, you know, Toy Story. Yeah. It's a big thing for kids. So you kind of have something for everybody here then. Yeah, I tried getting like a mix of some, you know, old school classic stuff with uh, King Kong to Goldfinger. And then some of the 80s blockbusters like Jaws to um, uh, Jurassic Park. And then, you know, some modern things like Lord of the Rings and uh, Joker. Yeah. Well, really great work. Thank you so much for taking us through each one and kind of giving your build insight there. So keep up the good work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.